welcome. I'm Michelle T. Tiller. Today we're talking about how to teach the First Start Reading Phonics program. This video is part two of two, breaking down the elements and steps that make a good First Start Reading lesson. In this video, I'll be explaining the individual parts of each lesson. If this is your first time with us, go ahead and subscribe to the channel to make sure you get updates when we post new curriculum guides to the channel. Now, without further ado, let's look at the components of the teacher guide and student books. The first page of each lesson in First Start Reading shows several pictures that begin with the sound. You'll notice the teaching instructions for this page include recitation, which we already discussed, as well as a scripted introduction of the letter. Additionally, there is tongue training, which is where you listen to every student individually make the new sound to be sure they are hearing and voicing correctly. There are also instructions for ear training to help students isolate the new sound within a word. These are both oral activities. The next page of the teacher guide includes specific formation instructions for both upper and lower case letters. Again, this is scripted so you can read directly from the guide. Student books have a blank space at the top of the page to draw a picture of something that begins with the new sound. Be sure that whatever is drawn in this is labeled with correct spelling. The next spread shows words that can be blended in red. This page can sometimes have a sentence to read as well. Work with your students to blend and read these words before tracing and writing. As students trace, have them voice the sound of the letter they are tracing. Except for common words. Common words can be traced and written, but there is no reason to try to blend and read these because they break the phonetic rules. These pages are also scripted for you at the bottom of the teacher guide. Note the gray boxes in the right and left hand margins. These are optional lessons that can be taught for students that are picking up the material quickly. They include blending and reading additional words with sounds covered in the lesson. They provide a challenge for those that need it and are reading. The next section is a story. Every story is made up of words the student can blend and read or of common words. All the words in the story are made of sounds that have been covered or of the common words they have been practicing. Nothing in the story will be a surprise word or a sound that is completely new. Students blend and read a line at a time, followed by answering a comprehension question. This reinforces the fact that reading includes understanding. Encourage good expression when reading. Students must practice how an interrogative sentence sounds different from an exclamatory one. When reading, be sure your student is using his reading finger and pointing to his words. This helps to maintain focus and place in the story. I suggest teaching them to leave their finger on the spot at the end of the sentence and looking up to hear and answer the comprehension question. Again, this section is scripted for you. The last sections are dictation. One dictation is of CBC or consonant vowel consonant words that the students can hear each sound to encode in the correct order. The other dictation is of common words. Dictation is not a spelling list in the traditional sense where the student has the list ahead of time and studies it to memorize the words. We want the student to hear, discern, and write. The last entry of the CBC dictation is a sentence. The sentence is made up of those CVC words and possibly a simple common word. Since sentence and end marks are dependent upon the reader's expression, be sure you are over enunciating and adding plenty of expression when dictating the sentence. Some lessons include dictation of common words. Before completing this dictation, be sure there has been a thorough review of common words. List these on the board and read through them several times. Consider a practice dictation on whiteboards prior to the official one in the student workbook as well. Choose words you feel the student will struggle with. The goal of common word dictation is to solidify mastery in reading common words. Students should not be writing these from memory. Instead, leave the practice list on the board for students to reference during the dictation. When a word is called, the student must read the word on the board and copy it into his book. After all, the goal was reading. Watch for student errors in copying from the board down. For both these dictations, have students point and read their list words over with you to ensure they are checking over their work. If you notice a mistake, 
point to the word and draw focus and ask students to read the word they wrote, reminding them what the word was supposed to be. At the end of each student book are several pages of review and an end of book assessment. Some pages are lists of all the CVC words listed in their word families, followed by those same words listed alphabetically together by the first letters. There is a list of all the common words. Read through these lists several times over a couple of days prior to giving the end of book reading and written assessments. These assessments will help you to gauge mastery of the material. Should these assessments indicate the student has not attained mastery, take a week to continue reviewing the material by rereading the word list and stories and practicing dictation. Then reassess. Thank you for joining us for today's teaching guidelines. If you found it helpful, be sure to check out our teaching guidelines playlist that includes resources and tips for curriculum from Memoria Press. As always, subscribe for more videos like these, comment below to let us know what you'd like to see in the future, and click the bell icon to know when we post new content to the channel. I'm Michelle T. Fatiller. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you next time.